The first commercial pebble bed reactor has been producing electricity in China. This is no longer a small test reactor, but a real nuclear power plant. In contrast to conventional nuclear power plants, however, the temperatures in this pebble bed reactor are twice as high at up to 750 degrees Celsius and nevertheless it is supposed to be safer. Tests have now been carried out on this reactor, during which all cooling systems were tested. The reactor type should be able to cool itself down in an emergency and therefore be safe. Today we take a look at whether these reactors are really safer, how new the idea really is, there have been reactors like this in Germany before, and whether they will become established in the future. And with that, welcome to the German Science Guy, I'm Dr. Jakob Botton, and in Germany we say Los geht's. Nuclear power is an issue that is the subject of much debate, at least in Germany. Germany is out of nuclear energy. The last nuclear power plants were taken off the grid on April 15, 2023. However, things look a little different around the world. The share of nuclear energy in global electricity production continues to decline. In the 1990s it was 17.5%, now it's less than 10%. But this is not because so many nuclear power plants have been shut down. The reason is that more and more electricity is being produced overall. Nuclear energy has remained at roughly the same level over time. Meanwhile, renewables in particular, but also coal and gas, have increased. New nuclear power plants are currently being built in 16 countries. There are 64 in total. Almost half of them will be in China. There are a number of new reactor types, particularly in the first planned projects, which differ from the classical nuclear power plants. These are also known as Generation 4. And these include the pebble bed reactor, which has been ready for a year. However, the idea of a pebble bed reactor is not really brand new. There have already been two of them in Germany. More on this later. But first, nuclear power Power plants are divided into different generations. The first generation were prototypes from the 1950s and 1960s. Generation 2 are the commercial light water reactors. The third generation includes further developments from the second generation that are designed to be better prevented from core meltdowns. These include pressurized water reactors such as the new EPR reactor in Finland. New concepts are to be implemented with the fourth generation. The aim is to produce electricity at a lower cost and make reactors significantly safer and produce less nuclear waste. Let's take a look at whether the pebble bed reactor in China was able to achieve this. The so-called HTRPM is located in Wai Hai in China. Construction began in 2012 and it was connected to the grid in 2021. And on December the 6th on 2023 it produced enough electricity for the first time to be considered commercially viable. HDRPM stands for High Temperature Reactor with Pebble Bed Module. The main differences to conventional nuclear power plants are already in the name. Firstly, the temperatures are higher and secondly, there are no fuel rods but spheres. At the end, nuclear power is actually just an extremely complicated way of bringing water to the boil. And the end result is always a turbine that is driven by steam. In a conventional nuclear power plant, the process starts with the fuel rods, which are immersed in a pool of water. The fuel rods contain uranium. The uranium is hit by slow neutrons. This causes the uranium nucleus to split, generating heat and two to three new fast neutrons. These are slowed down in the water and can then split further uranium nuclei. The fact is that only slow neutrons have a high enough probability of splitting another atomic nucleus and thus creating a chain reaction. The energy generated by nuclear fission causes the water in the pool to boil. Water vapor is produced and this drives a turbine and electricity is generated. The water vapor is then cooled by cold water and condensed. The cooled liquid water is returned to the fuel rods and the cycle starts all over again. The situation is a little different with pebble bed nuclear power plants. The plant in Hawaii consists of two reactors that jointly drive a turbine and with that produce electricity. There are no fuel rods in the reactor but balls. They are 6 cm in size and contain enriched uranium. Nuclear fission takes place in exactly the same way as in conventional nuclear power plants. There are 245,000 of these spheres in a reactor. The practical thing is that the spheres can be continuously refilled from above and released again at the bottom. This means that the reactor can be operated continuously without having to pause electricity production when the fuel rods need to be replaced. A ball can pass through the reactor 15 times until it burns out. This process is called medrule cycle and medrule stands for mehrfach durch 
Durchlaufzyklus. And yes, this is German. And it shows again that these reactors actually come from Germany. Let's take a closer look at the balls. The uranium is well packed. The uranium particles are only one millimeter in size and are surrounded by three layers. The first is a layer of graphite. This is intended to absorb gases produced during nuclear fission. This is followed by a layer of silicon carbide. This is intended to stop other solid fission products. Finally, there's another layer of graphite. These small coated particles are held together in a graphite sphere the size of a tennis ball. Yeah, and these are the pebbles for the pebble bed reactor. And for me, it's extremely hard to say sphere, so maybe I should just say pebble. <laughs> these pebbles. Okay, so in the reactor, the energy comes from nuclear fission in the spheres, or pebbles. They are not cooled by water, but by helium gas. The helium flows down onto the spheres from above. Here it is already 250 degrees Celsius, quite hot for a coolant. However, the nuclear reaction produces so much energy that this is completely sufficient. Once the helium has reached the bottom of the reactor, it has a temperature of 750 degrees Celsius. The hotter helium is then transported to a heat exchanger. Water vapor is then generated there and the cooler helium then flows back into the reactor. The steam drives a turbine and with that generates electricity. The water vapor is then cooled by additional cooling water until it becomes liquid again. The cool water flows back again to be vaporized by the hot helium. At the plant in China, the two reactors share one turbine. In other words, there are two combustion chambers, two helium circuits, but the steam is combined. The two reactors can produce 210 megawatts of electricity via turbines. In comparison, Germany's most powerful reactor, ESA-2, had an output seven times greater at 1486 megawatts. And Germany's largest wind farm, Hoesee, consists of 71 wind turbines and has a capacity of 522 megawatts. That is two and a half time as much as the pebble bed reactor in China. Now it has to be said that the comparison is not fair on all levels. After all, they don't have so much experience with pebble bed reactors and there's a lot of previous experience with conventional nuclear power plants. But of course, the question arises as to why such a new type of nuclear power plant is being built, which initially has less power when there are already functioning concepts. The answer is primarily about safety. By the way, if you want to be safe to never miss a new video from me, for example, when there are new technological developments in nuclear energy or in completely different areas, then subscribe to the channel. The idea of a pebble bed reactor is not really, really new. There have already been two of these reactors in Germany, in Jülich and in Hamm. Both are in Nordrhein-Westfalia, where I live. However, both reactors were shut down again in 1988. The pebble bed reactors were invented by Professor Rudolf Schulten. He developed the AVR experimental reactor in Jülich. This reactor was operated from 1966 onwards and had a capacity of 15 megawatts. It was therefore considerably smaller than the current pebble bed reactor in China. The operating principle was very similar to that in China. However, there were problems with the temperature in the reactor and the movement of the balls in the reactor. These could not be predicted correctly and in 1978, 27,000 liters of water broke into the reactor. In contrast to the reactor in China, the pipes with the cooling water also ran above the reactor. It was shut down in 1988. The reactor was partially dismantled, but still has to be stored temporarily until 2060. Only then will the radioactivity be weak enough for it to be dismantled completely. There was a second pebble bed reactor in Hamm. It was operated with thorium instead of uranium. It went into operation in 1983, but only generated electricity for the first time in 1987 and was then shut down again the following year. The reason for this was that the state no longer wanted to financially support its continued operation. The reactor did not produce as much electricity because there were repeated incidents, but he had an output of 300 megawatts. In other words, even more than the current Chinese reactor. One of the problems was that the balls produced graphite dust from rubbing at each other. When attempts were made to remove it, it was released into the environment and with it radioactivity. After the reactors were shut down, this type of reactor was no longer pursued in Germany. In the meantime, there were still plans for a pebble bed reactor in South Africa. However, they never finished it. Well, but still some countries are interested in it. So what is the advantage of these reactors? Why does it keep coming up? 
The biggest advantage of pebble bed reactors is that they are actually safer, which you wouldn't immediately think if you consider that we had a lot of problems with them in Germany. But in the event of an accident, it should cool down on its own without outside help. And that's exactly what they have tested with a new, larger reactor in China. The cooling systems were switched off for this purpose. The temperature inside then rose to 850 degrees Celsius, but then cooled down again by itself. The reactor therefore passed the test. The whole thing works like this. After the cooling system failed, an emergency program was activated. This caused the control rods to be dropped into the reactor. They absorb some of the neutrons and thus disrupt the chain reaction. The rest works on its own. The warm helium at the bottom of the reactor rises and the cooler helium sinks from above and cools the spheres. In addition, the fission reaction slows down itself because as the temperature rises, the reaction slows down and then produces less heat. This means that the reaction regulates itself. This fact is repeatedly emphasized in publications about the pebble bed reactor. However, this is not a special characteristic of this reactor. This is also the case with conventional nuclear power plants. The difference is that temperatures can only be reached in the reactor at which the fuel elements, in this case the spheres, do not break. The uranium particles are triple coated and can withstand temperatures of up to 1600 degrees Celsius. The reactor is therefore designed in such a way that this temperature is not reached. This actually makes the reactor safer. But it also has an important disadvantage, because in order to achieve this, the power is deliberately kept low. The power density is 30 times lower than a conventional nuclear power plant. And there's another problem. The reactor not only produces less electricity, but also less heat. In addition to producing electricity, high temperature reactors are actually also ideal for providing process heat for seawater desilation or hydrogen production, for example. However, this is not possible with this model. And also, it's not completely safe. If, for example, water or air enters the reactor, accidents still can happen. If water hits the spheres, the reactivity would increase and so would the temperature. This could cause the fuel spheres to overheat. But overall, it can be said that the reactors are a little bit safer than conventional nuclear power plants. But is this advantage enough to ensure that more of these reactors are being built in the future? Such questions are not always easy to answer. In the end, costs often play the decisive role, and this is not always easy to estimate, especially when it comes to the future. The HDRPM is to be further developed into a larger 600 megawatt reactor. It should be possible to build these reactors in series, making them cheaper. Six more of these reactors are currently planned. According to the developers, the construction costs should be 10 to 20% higher than those of a classical light water reactor. The costs for electricity production should also then be 10 to 20% higher than for conventional nuclear power plants. And this only is true if everything goes according to plan, of course. The construction of the current pebble bed reactor was delayed by five years and has become more expensive as a result. However, it is of course possible that this will no longer happen with the next one because enough experience has been gained. However, it is rather unlikely that it will be suddenly become super attractive financially. So let's summarize it. The pebble bed reactor in China is not a completely new idea. Instead of fuel rods, the uranium is packed in walls and cooled with helium instead of water. It is somewhat safer than conventional nuclear power plants because it can shut down on its own if the cooling system fails. This has now been tested and the reactor has passed the test. However, other accidents cannot be ruled out. In addition, construction and electricity production are more expensive than with conventional nuclear power plants. And very important, these reactors also have no advantage when it comes to nuclear waste. So in my view, it's not the big hit. But let's address the elephant in the room. What do you think about nuclear energy? Like I said, in Germany, there's a pretty big discussion about if we should make a comeback in nuclear energy. Now, I'm interested what you think about it. And as always, please let us know from which part of the world you are commenting. Well, and from me, a big Danke, which means thank you for watching. Here you can find another video about the topic of energy, this time about liquefied natural gas. I visited Texas, where some of the largest LNG terminals in the world are being built, and I investigated if this is a really good idea. You should really check this out. I think it's a great video. And I say Auf Wiedersehen or goodbye.